Welcome to the Semantic Endpoint Protection 12.1 Install, Configure and Deploy course. This is the course introduction. In the Install, Configure and Deploy lessons, these are the ones we will cover. Uh, we'll look at the course introduction. We'll look at the endpoint product solution. We'll also look at how we install Semantic Endpoint Protection. I'll call it SEP from now on as it's a bit of a less of a mouthful. Configuring the SEP environment deploying the clients, client and policy management, configuring, configuring content updates, and designing the endpoint environment. In the second part of the course, the Manage and Administer course, these are the lessons we'll cover there. We'll look at the antivirus insight and sonar protection technologies. We'll manage the virus and spyware protection policies. We'll look at the exception policies. We'll introduce the network threat protection and application device control. We'll also look at the firewall policies, the intrusion prevention policies, managing network threat protection and the application device control, virtualization, and also configuring replication, failover, and load balancing, performing server and database management, advanced monitoring and reporting, and interfacing the SEPM with the Protection Center version 2. So the course objectives for the install, configure and deploy is to describe the endpoint protection products and product components so you fully understand how it's made up, how to install, configure and manage, how to deploy the clients, how the policies and clients are managed, how we configure the content and product updates, and how we design the environment. The course objectives follow quite closely to the lessons. So the intended audience are for security administrators who need to manage and administer this environment. We need to look at the people planning and implementing the security. They would be also interested in this area and monitoring and maintaining the security. For the course materials, each student will have a manual and also a lab system that will be pre-configured for them. This slide just gives you an idea of what the lab manual looks like. Here we can see under the system name, the CSO1 in this case, indicates which system you must be working on at the time of doing the lab instructions. We can see underneath the solution section, the solution steps. Now it's up to you whether or not you consider yourself to be an expert in SEP uh, or whether or not you call, are a complete beginner. Up to you whether or not you follow these solution steps or just try to take the tasks without looking at those. We will be using VMware Workstation for the lab environment. So we need to know how to start the virtual machines, log on to them, adjust the view, and run basic commands. For those of you who aren't aware of how to work VMware Workstation, there's an Appendix A to assist you with this. And this is the lab environment. We can see that we have six VM guest systems, we have a domain controller which must be started at all times, it must be the first system to be started. Then we have a SEPM01 and that's the key, the main system that we'll be working on for installing and configuring our environment. We have three clients, CSO1, CSO2 and CSO3. And the SEPM02 we will use at later labs but it's not required for all of the labs. Now, a point of note, when working with VMware, um, it is very resource hungry. And if you find your lab environment uh, performing slowly, it's well worth um, suspending any of these uh, guest systems that you don't need running for that particular lab. Here we can see what the VMware environment will look like once it's all been configured on your lab system. We can see the table here has a detail of the IP address, the guest host name, and also the purpose for each system. This may be useful for referring back to 
when you're working through the labs. And the Semantic Connect uh, slide gives you details about um, the uh, customer driven or should I say the uh, community based driven area that's very useful for uh, customers and uh, everyone alike to try and find information about the latest technologies available to Symantec. Um, we have fast and easy access to the technical content. We've also got the peer-to-peer -peer discussion forum, which is really useful. If you don't have um, a membership of any other forums, this one is worth having. Um, also, you've got all the links to the training and education resources, as well as the support links. And of course, you can become certified. If that's a, a desire of yours, you can become certified in the Symantec products, and SEP is no exception. There is a uh, Symantec certified specialist exam you can take. And that brings us to the end of that introduction lesson.